Hi, I'm Becky, and we are reading a book, How to Use Power Phrases. You say what you mean, mean what you say, and get what you want. I like that. We're on secret number three on page 55, picking words that work. So this is really good. All success experts talk about it. Stephen Covey calls it beginning with the end in mind. Lee Hebner calls it the recipe for clarity. Maureen Williamson calls it visualization. Whatever it's called, you hear it from everyone who tells you what you want, to, how to get what you want in life. Think of the outcome you want and ask yourself what path of action will get you there. What could be simpler than that, right? Oh, I did that right? That wasn't in the book. Well, herding cats could be simpler. Getting an election recount in Florida might be simpler. Don't let that stop you. Picking words that work. You may prefer to start talking and think later, but you won't get where you want to go. You have to decide what you want. So the author was speaking at a conference. Oh, he was in a meeting at the conference. He wasn't a speaker. And the speaker says, what do you want to be different when this conference is over? If you could have a magic wand when this conference ends, what results do you want to see? What a great question. He had us all focus on the results and you need to do the same thing in your conversations. I'm telling you consciously choose results. If your conscious mind does not choose a goal for the conversation, your unconscious mind does. Usually unconscious goals are inappropriate goals and undermine you in the long run. Here's some common inappropriate goals. To crush and destroy someone and come out triumphant. It's a little dramatic, but I bet you get my point. To unload or dump or relieve emotional pressure. People don't like, they resist being dumped on to change who someone is. That doesn't work. To be right and prove others are wrong. <laughs> this doesn't work because they want to be right too. The conversation becomes about who's right and has nothing to do with the issues. Okay, so root out misdirected goals and replace them with conscious, actionable goals. The results work for you to understand the other person. You want to express yourself so that the person understands your point of view. To problem solve or to relay needed information. Those are all attainable goals and they don't backfire. Listen to people and talk and guess what results they're working toward in any given moment. And better yet, ask what you're trying to accomplish. Look at the process. Okay, the author's son is David. He's a computer genius and his computer go-to. One day when David came home from work, I asked him to help me with my computer as soon as he walked in the door. Yeah, we all love that, right? <laughs> he immediately turned around and left without a word. My desire was to get my computer and to get him to clean up his attitude. My chances of success with this was small, small than that. I needed a better goal. So I decided to dissolve tension between us revolving around the computer. I went to him and I said, can we talk? He said, if it has nothing to do with computers. I said, this is not about me trying to get you to fix my computer. So David invited me in. How can I solve, dissolve this tension that's around the computer? His reply. Mom, it seems like everything, the only thing you come to me with is help about the computer. <laughs> Busted. Who has friends like that? Right? The only time they come to you is when they need something. I could have easily gotten defensive, but it wouldn't have got me the results I wanted. I could have changed my goal into defending myself or the goal into blaming David. Instead, the better response was, I didn't know this was an issue. Would you like to spend more time together? We started doing things together and, and our hearts opened. I thought my son had an attitude. Again, this is the author speaking. My son was great. Never had an attitude. Okay, sometimes they all do. 
Um, I didn't realize that I had contributed to that attitude in a big way. Okay. Um, here's, a, here's another story. Linda Larson tells about her son, Miles. They were arguing about whether a basketball player was right-handed or left-handed. Miles was sure he was right-handed. The friend insisted he was left-handed. After going back and forth, Miles said, you're right. You may be right. He may be left-handed. Linda asked, how were you able to say that when you were certain he was right-handed? And Miles said, before I take an action myself, I ask, will the action I'm about to take further this relationship or hurt it? If the answer is it will hurt it, then I don't do it. Way to keep your priorities straight. Miles decided that it was more important to build the relationship than to be right about a basketball player's right or left hand. Before you speak, ask yourself, would this remark increase their respect of me or lessen it? Ask, will these words move us towards resolution or away from it? Ask, if I say this, does it increase the chances of me getting what I want or decrease it? Say what you mean when you speak, but choose words that result in a powerful outcome. If what you're doing isn't working, change your approach. You might think your approach should work, but if it doesn't, give it up. Before you speak, ask yourself what your thoughts are, what your goals are, what your chances of a success are, and what real results you might be better off pursuing. Okay, pick winning words that work. Uh, secret number four is the power of the simple truth. We'll do that in the next video. Bye.